Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about all the books that I've read so far this year that I haven't already mentioned on my channel. Before we get started, if you're interested in any of the books that I mentioned today, I'll leave a link to them in the description box below. If you're interested in purchasing any of the books, please use my link because it supports my channel and it's greatly appreciated. And let's dive right in. The first book I want to talk about today is called Mirror Work by Louise Hay. I read this book at the beginning of this year and oh, I love Louise Hay, she's so wonderful. She can be considered one of the first self-help kind of coaches, I guess. She's not alive anymore, unfortunately. She passed away a few years ago, and she's best known for her book, You Can Heal Your Life, which I have already read in the past. But Mirror Work is specifically about her process of looking at yourself in the mirror and physically out loud saying affirmations and kind things to yourself while looking at yourself directly in the mirror. And it sounds simple to do, but it actually is really, really quite confronting at times and quite difficult to do, surprisingly. And so in this book, Louise kind of walks you through week by week, just like kind of getting started and the simple things that you can say to yourself in the mirror or simply just looking at yourself in the mirror and just getting used to seeing your own reflection all the way through to, I guess, more advanced affirmations and other things that you can think about while you're doing your mirror work to really help you release any negative energy and heal your life. I think her mirror work technique is just, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's so simple and yet I think it's so effective. And even though I haven't personally tried mirror work for a substantial amount of time, I have done it here and there. And I do find it confronting and a little bit awkward to do even though it's literally just me standing in the bathroom mirror by myself so I don't know why I would feel awkward but I do but yeah it, it's really such a powerful technique and this little book even though it's only short is it's just beautiful I feel like every time I read one of Louise Hayes books I just just feel a bit better about myself and about my life and the world around me so if you're interested in Louise Hay I recommend reading You Can Heal Your Life as well as a starting point but if you've already read that one give mirror work a go as well even if you don't want to actively do mirror work it just the book itself just fills your soul with with joy and happiness anyway the next book I've read this year is Why Has Nobody Told Me This Before by Julie Smith this one was actually on my recent TBR video and I did start reading it and unfortunately I haven't actually finished it. I got about halfway through and there are reasons why I haven't finished it. Julie Smith is a psychologist and she talks a lot about different techniques to help you cleanse your mind and I guess overcome challenges in your life. And this book is basically a self-help book in essence. And I've read my fair share of self-help books in the past and I kind of feel like I'm at the stage where I've read so many that a lot of them just seem to repeat the same information over and over again. And Julie's book took a different approach to most other self-help books in that instead of saying just don't think negative thoughts and then your life will magically fix itself like a lot of self-help books say, instead she took the approach of you're going to have negative thoughts because you're a human being going through this journey called life. And it's about managing those negative thoughts, identifying when you're having them, and yeah, just managing them, making sure that they don't get out of control, and really just working through any negative scenarios or situations that you may find yourself in. And that I found quite refreshing, because like I mentioned, not a lot of self-help books take that particular angle, but there were just, despite that, I still felt like there wasn't much new information that I hadn't already read in another self-help book. So in essence, that's not really, dare I say it's not really Julie's fault. I mean, it's no one's fault. It's just that I'm probably not her target market anymore because she's still introducing a lot of ideas that, like I said, already in other self-help books that I, as a experienced self-help book reader, have already come across. But if you're new to the self-help book genre, you may actually really enjoy this book. Unfortunately for me, I just had a lot of other books that I wanted to read and I just felt like I didn't want to read the same thing that I felt like I've already read again so I moved on to other books about halfway through this book. Another thing that I will say and I don't know whether this is just me because I have dodgy eyes sometimes but I feel like a, a lot of the sentences in Why Has Nobody Told Me This Before just weren't structured correctly and so I would read a sentence and think to myself whoa that doesn't make sense what the hell and then reread it and think to myself no I, I have read it correctly it just still doesn't make sense. And I don't know whether my eyes were just having a really bad time and I, I just wasn't reading the words correctly, but after a while I kind of got the feeling that the wording of the book itself just isn't 
done well enough to make the book flow and I found myself having to reread a lot of sentences a lot of the time to understand what she was trying to convey and yeah I found that quite jarring as well which is another reason why I kind of gave up on the book because I like reading things that flow and that are easy to read and I felt like this one was becoming a bit of a struggle. I might pick up this book again in future just to finish it off because I don't like leaving books unfinished but as it is right now with a massive to be read list still waiting for me I think I'm gonna leave this book half finished. The next book is Saga Land by Richard Fiddler and Kari Gislason. I've actually got this book here with me but I'll put a photo of it anyway. This is a beautiful book. I it, Again it was on my TBR video from earlier and I started reading it and it just it ended up being very different from what I originally thought it would be. Essentially Richard and Kari are two friends that work together in journalism and they decided to go to Iceland together for a trip. Kari is originally from Iceland or at least his family is so for him it was kind of like a homecoming and a chance to visit all his family and kind of relive his childhood and for Richard it was the first time going to Iceland so he had a different perspective being the first time visitor there. In addition to Kari and Richard's adventures across Iceland and their tourist spots and what they did and where they visited, the book also has a number of old Icelandic folklore tales or I guess old stories that have been passed down throughout the ages and it recounts those stories so you actually get to not only learn about Icelandic culture from a modern day perspective but also hear all, all these old sagas and tales that have been passed down for generations and generations. I didn't really know anything about Iceland before reading this book and now that I have read it I desperately want to go and visit Iceland. <laughs> it sounds like such an inspirational rugged amazing pocket of land. I think the history now that I know about it is so rich and so interesting and just the landscape as well is something that I don't think many other countries really have at all. I think it's so unique and the book actually has a number of photos I'll show you. There's a number of photos of the different terrains in Iceland that Richard and Kari visited while they were there. The different land formations and they're just so unique and beautiful. Nothing like you get here in Australia that's for sure. And I think this book is the perfect combination of a real life non-fiction story or recount of someone's travels but also the very wonderful kind of um, epic tales of all these old all these old Icelandic stories. So, so it's a beautiful combination of two very different writing styles and it's just an absolute pleasure to read. I highly recommend this one. The next book that I've read recently is All the Young Men by Ruth Cocker Burns. Oh boy, this book is amazing. I actually found it in the library. I'd never seen it or heard of it before but just thought it was interesting so I decided to borrow it. Ruth was around in the 1980s in southern USA when the AIDS pandemic was first hitting and she was one of really the only people in her town that cared for the dying men that had AIDS. Being a very religious town, unfortunately pretty much every other person that was in that town either actively disliked people with AIDS or at least was passive towards them and didn't make any effort to help them. Ruth didn't actively set out to be a helper of people with AIDS but she was visiting a friend in hospital early when the pandemic first hit and she heard a man crying out for his mum in the ward next to her friends and so she went over and basically just held his hand because he was dying of AIDS and no one, not even the nurses working in the hospital, would go into the room and help him because they were all either judgmental of him or they were scared that they would catch AIDS themselves and the fact that she not only decided to go into that room and hold his hand and be with him as well but then took that as the beginning of pretty much a lifelong work of helping men with AIDS I think it's just oh, so beautiful. She has such a gorgeous beautiful soul and her book was a real pleasure to read. Some of the stories that she tells in this book are simply heartbreaking but there are glimmers of hope as well and a few other people that she comes across that really offer her a lot of help in helping people with AIDS and it, it just it almost sounds like another time. We're, we're 40 years on from the beginning of the AIDS pandemic and it's kind of been forgotten in a way. I feel like particularly since coronavirus AIDS has kind of been overshadowed and I find stories about people who had AIDS in the 80s particularly fascinating. It just feels like a whole different time and one that we've kind of forgotten about as society but 
I think it's so important to remember how much suffering there was and how much discrimination there was and I think this book is a really really good reminder of what people with AIDS went through and it's just so eye-opening and if nothing else it makes me think about the injustices or the issues of today and am I turning a blind eye to that as well as someone living in 2023 um, yeah, amazing amazing book I highly highly recommend it and last but not least is I Remember Nothing by Nora Ephron. You may not have heard of Nora before, as I hadn't until I picked up her book, but she actually wrote When Harry Met Sally and wrote and I believe directed as well Sleepless in Seattle. So even if you're not familiar with her, you've definitely at least heard of her work. I Remember Nothing is basically just a reflection on life and a whole bunch of essays and thoughts and mini memoirs that Nora's put together about tidbits of her life or things that she finds funny or interesting. And it's such a light-hearted, beautiful book to read. I wouldn't say it's about anything in particular and it definitely doesn't qualify as an autobiography in my opinion but it's just nice and light and each chapter is about something different and I must admit I have actually laughed out loud a few times when reading this book. It's Nora has such a, a brilliant way of writing and phrasing things and even when she's talking about something as mundane as Teflon pans or perhaps not quite as mundane as losing her memory sadly she always has a, a really light nice twist to whatever she's talking about and yeah it's just a pleasure to read if you've been reading a lot of heavy books recently or or just want something for a change of pace this is a nice one to read apparently she also has another well-known book along similar lines of kind of like a memoir tidbit kind of book called I Feel Bad About My Neck and after reading I Remember Nothing I think I'm gonna have to read I Feel Bad About My Neck too because yeah I really enjoyed her writing style and I want more <laughs> That concludes today's video. As mentioned earlier, if you're interested in any of the books I mentioned today, I'll leave links to them in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye bye.